Hello and welcome to Main Street United Methodist Church's online worship on this uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful, beautiful day. The service is for the January 10, which is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, the first Sunday uh, during the Epiphany season. I remember Epiphany is all about new beginnings, uh, things starting out anew. So today we remember uh, Jesus being baptized by uh, John the Baptist in the Jordan as he began his ministry. In the upcoming weeks, we'll be uh, uh, reading about the call of the first disciples. I don't really have any announcements. I want to wish everyone a, a very wonderful and happy new year. And uh, I ask that everyone would continue to pray for one another and for our nation. And, uh, but right now, let's worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we begin with the call to worship? Let us pray. Oh, holy Lord, Lord God Almighty, we love you. We thank you for an opportunity to worship you in this place. I thank you for the opportunity that people can worship you in their own homes. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit here into each and every one of us and pour out your Holy Spirit into the homes of everyone who worships with us online. Help us all, Lord, help us all to feel your presence as we are worshiping you. Amen. Now let us join in the opening hymn, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood.
Our affirmation of faith is number 881 in the back of the hymnal. This is the Apostles' Creed, our traditional version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Now, our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Mark 1, 4 through 11. Will you pray with me? Oh, holy Lord, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for this gospel of Mark that we can read and understand. I thank you for these words that Jesus spoke. Lord, I pray as we read this scripture that you might open our minds to a little greater understanding of this scripture and draw us closer to you and closer to one another all the days of our lives. Amen. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days... Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <sighs> Baptism of the Lord Sunday. I was baptized as an infant. And I went through a confirmation at such a young age that frankly I can't remember my confirmation classes. When I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ, it became very important to me to understand my baptism. And so I asked the question, is baptism necessary for salvation? And after studying the Bible and, and talking to my pastor, I came to the conclusion that no, baptism is not necessary for salvation. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ, by repentance of our sins and forgiveness of our sins. So if baptism is not necessary and sufficient for salvation, why do we baptize folk? Why should we get baptized? Well, there's a simple answer and there's a complicated answer. And the simple answer is, Jesus told us to. Right? In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all of his commandments. Well, now when I was a child, and my parents told me to do something. And uh, being the inquisitive child that I was, I would say, why? Right? And you know what they would say? Because I said so. Have you all ever heard that? You know, when, uh, when I was a teenager, I said, when I become a parent, I am never going to say because I said so. When a child asks why, I'm going to tell them why. Well, guess what? I had to eat those words because 
children can only understand to a certain point. And when I told my child to do something and they asked why and I explained why they needed to do this thing or why they needed to not do something, uh, they couldn't understand. And so it came down to the, uh, I had to go to because I said so. So getting baptized because Jesus said so, well, that's a child's explanation. All right, that's a child's explanation. There are reasons for baptism that go beyond simple obedience. And since today is baptism of the Lord Sunday, I'm going to take this opportunity to explore some questions about baptism. Like, what is baptism? What does baptism do? And, and are there any benefits to being baptized? What are the benefits of baptism? So what is baptism? Well, baptism is one of our two um, sacraments in our church, in the Protestant church. There are two sacraments. Uh, one is baptism. You know what the other one is? My wife's wait, raising her hand. She, you all know it's communion, right? Communion is the other sa uh, sacrament. So baptism in the church is the outward symbol of an inner grace initiated by God, instituted by Jesus. And this, this grace is God's gift to us as undeserving sinners. In baptism, we become members of the community of faith, adopted brothers and sisters into the family of God. We become part of Christ's holy church, a part of the body of Christ. In Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, we can read, For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. Baptism is part of our long life process, or lifelong process, rather, of growing in faith. So what does baptism do? Our faith in Jesus enters us into a covenant relationship with God. Baptism seals that covenant in the church. You know, when an infant is baptized in the church, the infant's Christian guardians sponsor that child and promise to raise the child as a member of the community of faith. They vow to nurture the child so that the child can grow, can grow up and put their trust in Jesus Christ and profess their faith openly in front of the congregation and the world. And both the congregation and the children's guardians vow before God to help provide an environment where that child can grow in faith and learn God's grace. So it is the responsibility of the entire Christian community of faith to guide the newly baptized child in their faith journey and lead that baptized child to confirmation. And when the child becomes old enough to make their own personal public profession of faith in Jesus Christ and commit their life to God, you know, that's... That's what we are, all of us, in the faith community. That's what we are vowing to do when we uh, are part of that infant baptism. After confirmation, the, the professing Christian becomes a full member of the local church. And confirmation is a continuation of the process started at the infant baptism. By initiating our children into the community of, community of faith and raising them as Christians and providing them with an environment where they can feel loved and grow in faith, we are including our children in our own faith journey. Now, when an adult is baptized, that adult publicly professes his or her faith in Jesus Christ and dedicates his or her life to God. The adult enters into this covenant relationship with God because of their faith. 
Baptism seals that covenant in the church. And the entire faith community has a responsibility to that adult to see that they grow in their faith. A baptized adult is a member of the community of faith and part of the body of Christ. And that's not just in the local church or in our particular denomination. When I say the body of Christ, I mean all the denominations, all Christians, everywhere in this world. Now, John Wesley uh, wrote about the five benefits of baptism. Five, there's five benefits of baptism, he said. And the first benefit is that baptism is a symbol of Jesus' righteousness washing away the guilt of original sin. Now, original, the original sin was disobedience, okay? God told Adam and Eve, don't eat that one particular fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. They did anyway, they were disobedient, and ever since that, uh, the human race has lived in a fallen state, okay? Jesus' obedience of God restored us to a right relationship with God, removing the guilt of original sin. Now, the second benefit of baptism is that through this sacrament, we enter into this new covenant with God. Now, under the old covenant, the priests, the, the Jewish priests, circumcised Jewish boys to mark them as God's people. Baptism marks us as God's people under the new covenant. Now, a third benefit of baptism is that through baptism, we become members of the community of faith. The visible church accepts the newly baptized person into the community and is responsible for nurturing that person to grow in holiness of life. The fourth benefit of baptism is that baptism symbolizes that we are joint heirs of the kingdom of heaven. Now, baptism doesn't guarantee us salvation, but it does symbolize the possibility that the blood of Jesus can make us clean and we can enter into the kingdom of heaven one day. Faith in Jesus, repentance, the forgiveness of sins, this is what guarantees our salvation. Now, the fifth benefit is that baptism is an outward symbol of an inner change. The newly baptized person confirms that inner change when they pub publicly profess their faith in Jesus Christ. Through baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit, and it is the Holy Spirit who makes this inner change you know, who does this inner change inside of us. Now, John the Baptist, he preached a baptism of repentance, baptizing people to, to make straight the way of the Lord, to clear the path of all obstacles, any path that is an ob or any obstacle in the path between us and God, clear it out, make straight the paths. Jesus Christ invites you to receive the benefits of, of baptism. Now, I baptize with water. When I have a, a bapti uh, baptismal service, I baptize with water, making an outward symbol. God baptizes with the Holy Spirit, making an inner change. Every person baptized here at Main Street United Methodist Church is a baptized member of the church but not a professing member. A professing member is one who stands before this congregation to answer the historic baptismal questions and make a special vow to join the professing membership of the church. And just as baptism is not actually necessary for salvation, membership in the church is not necessary for full participation in the life of the church. People can come here to our church 
and fully participate in the life of our church, participate in our missions and our ministries. They can even serve on committees without becoming a member of the church. Now, there's the only limit is that voting members of the Staff Parish Relations Committee and the Administrative Council must be professing members of the church. All the other committees and ministries in the church, you don't have to be a, a professing member. But in order to get a vote on the Admin Council or the Staff Parish Relations Committee, you have to be a member of the church. And I want to I want to say that um, our church is going to be making some very important decisions in the next couple of years. And everyone who comes to this church has a voice and a, an opinion about these uh, important decisions. But only professing members will get a vote. And so just as I asked the question, if baptism is not necessary and sufficient for salvation, then why get baptized? Well, I have to ask, if membership is not required to fully participate in the life and mission and ministry of the church, why join the church? The obvious answer is so you can get a vote <laughs> on making decisions uh, about this church and the direction of the church. Um, but uh, there's a deeper reason than that. And here's the deeper reason. When a person joins our church, he or she takes five special vows in joining the church. And they are to faithfully participate in Main Street United Methodist Church's ministries by prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Those are the five vows. Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Now, I have asked many different people what that means. And, and sometimes I, I get a different answer from every single person about what these, what these vows really mean. And so I'd like to define them for you if, if you will allow me. We are all in differing stages of our faith journey. Some of us who are, are worshiping with us online right now might be brand new Christians just starting their faith journey. Some might be old hands, been Christians all their life and uh, are strong and have grown deep in their faith. You know, but all of us are at a different stage in our faith journey. And I believe um, we can define these five vows in terms of growth. I think they're best defined in terms of growth. So that as far as prayers, you know, when, when someone um, takes that vow to support the church's missions and ministries with their prayers, I expect members of this church to grow in their prayer life. To grow in the prayer life, praying more often, praying more fervently every year. Prayer is important. With much prayer, there is much power. With little prayer, there is little power. And with no prayer, there's no power. As members of this church, we work to grow in our prayer life. We do that through reading the scriptures, studying the Bible, by increasing the frequency and the duration of our prayers to prayer more deeply and more fervently and more often. As I heard uh, Bishop Cho say, a nod to God at mealtimes is not enough, <laughs> right? So when we make this uh, vow to pray, to support the church with our prayers, we are vowing to grow in our prayer life. When we it, um, take this vow to support the church with our presence, you know, that means being here. Right? That means being here. Now, I know that's very difficult right now because we don't have in-person worship. But everyone who is worshiping with us online right now is present. You know, we are present. Even if we can't be physically in this building, we can be the church out there, and we should be. So uh, I expect that members of our church will grow 
in participation in worship, uh, participation in missions and ministries of this church. And I know when I, when I talk to this about some people about presence and, and, uh, and, um, and taking this vow of being present and, uh, and people want to define exactly what that means and I believe it is best defined in terms of growth. Wherever we are right now, we can become more present. We can be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in all the missions and ministries in our community, in our church, and in our world. And I have to say, when, we, when the pandemic is over and we can meet here in person and worship, we can worship God without wearing masks and, and, and being able to sing together and, and say the Lord's Prayer together. Oh, wow, I can't wait for that. And so I just, I just hope and pray that when we are able to meet together in worship here in this sanctuary, let's invite all our friends, right? <laughs> let's, let's all come and worship God as often as we can. Now, the, the next, uh, one of the vows was about gifts. A member's gifts are the things that they give to the church. And that includes money, but it also includes time and talents. So I expect the members of our church to tithe, right? And a tithe is a percentage of our income that we set aside to give to God through the church. And then we trust the church to use this money wisely to further the kingdom of God here in our community. The traditional tithe for a mature Christian is 10%, 10% of income. However, really your tithe is a percentage that you set aside, and God might be calling you to give more than 10%. Some people give more. Uh, some people God is calling them to give less. But here's what I expect. I expect new Christians, you know, new wet-behind-the-ears Christians uh, to begin tithing small like 1% or 2%, and then each year uh, increase that tithe until eventually they grow toward that 10% maturity. The next vow is through service. Service. God has given each and every one of us a unique set of talents and abilities. You know, And we combine our talents and abilities in the church to build strong, effective ministries. We fulfill the vow of service by using our talents in service to others. And we work to make this world a better place through service. And once again, this is a matter of growth, right? I expect that the members of our church will continue to grow in their faith journey through service in the church and in our community, and in the world. And the fifth vow is witness. Our witness is what we say and how we live. What we say and how we live. It is through our witness that we make disciples for Jesus Christ. And we fulfill this witness vow by growing in our witness, by living more faithfully for Jesus Christ, by offering Jesus to those who do not know him, by inviting people to come to the church by inviting people to give their lives to Jesus. We witness when we tell other people what God is doing in our lives. And we've all got God's stories. You know, God's active in our lives. If we just open our eyes and open our ears, we would see the hand of God in our lives everywhere. So uh, we build the church by speaking well of it. Now, so joining Main Street United Methodist Church is a commitment to grow in our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness as we faithfully participate in our shared ministries. So remember your baptism and be thankful. And I have to say, if anyone worshiping with us online has not been baptized and wants to be, please call me. 
and let's plan a huge baptismal service celebration when we can all get together in person when this pandemic is over and the same thing likewise if anyone worshiping with us online would like to become members of this church and take those vows vows of growth spiritual growth please give me a call let's talk let's plan something where we can get together and have a wonderful service of committal Jesus Christ invites you to be his people his people walking in his ways remember your baptism and be thankful amen uh, would you all come forward and and uh, and let's join in our hymn of fellowship wade in the water that's number 2107 in the faith we sing Hallelujah. I'd like to thank everyone for continuing to give your tithes and offerings uh, to God through this church. And we, have we continue to receive these through the mail and people dropping them off. And I would just like to uh, ask God to bless all the tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, thank you so much. You have given us this beautiful world to live in and take care of. Lord, you have given each of us stewardship over a portion of your creation. Lord God, teach us how to be better stewards of what you've given us. Teach us how to learn and grow and build your kingdom. Teach us how to use all of our resources wisely, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would bless all the tithes and offerings that we have received. Bless these gifts and bless the givers. Amen.
Lord God. Lord, we place ourselves and all our loved ones into your hands. Lord, you know our nation is going through a difficult time. Our church is going through a difficult time. This whole world, Lord, is suffering under this pandemic. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us all day by day to see us through this time to something better in the future. I pray that if any are sick, Lord, you'd provide a cure. If any are in pain, I pray that you would provide relief for that pain. I pray that you would heal all those who have cancer. Heal your people, Lord. We have many people in our congregation who, um, who, are, who are sick, who are hurting, who are, are facing medical procedures and trying to recover from medical procedures. There are so many people in our, in our family, in our church family, Lord, that are feeling a, a sense of distress right now and disquiet. And I pray that you would pour out your comfort and your peace into all of your people. Comfort those who are grieving. Comfort those who are worrying or are afraid. Help us to walk in your light, unafraid. I ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us sing hymn number 362, Nothing But the Blood.
Now may our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless each and every one of you. May God fill you all with peace and strength in believing. God bless you. Amen.